Welcome to Straight Up Dog Talk, a new kind of podcast where no topic is off limits. We're bringing in experts and owners to have the conversations we should be having as a dog community. Each week, a new guest will share first-hand experiences, educational resources, or professional guidance to help you learn and grow along with your dog. You won't get one perspective here. You'll get them all. Because every dog is different, and every owner is too. You can follow along on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at Straight Up Dog Talk or by visiting www.straightupdogtalk.com. Tune in from any of your favorite podcast platforms. This episode features a paid partnership with Mind Game of the Month. Mind Game of the Month is a subscription box for dogs meant to exhaust their energy and enrich their mind. The box is intended for busy parents who can't entertain their pups all day and need an easy way to expend their energy. Every month, your pup will sniff, play, and chew their way through the products in the box. Every box includes one enrichment puzzle, one active play toy, one long-lasting treat, and one full bag of treat. Each product serves as a mental workout to tire your pup. Check out their website in the episode details below. Welcome to Straight Up Dog Talk. I'm Em, and I'm flying solo this week without Josh. And we do have a really fun guest tonight. We have Megan who is the owner of Mind Game of the Month with us tonight. How are you doing, Megan? Doing good, Emily. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So we started getting your subscription boxes, I think it's been three or four months ago now. And by the time this comes out, it'll be even more months by then. But it's something that's totally different. And I really, really like it because you provide something different every month. First of all, I have a dog who is busy, high energy, high maintenance, very smart. And when he figures out a toy, then we kind of have to retire that toy either temporarily or permanently because it's not fun or challenging or it's not even enriching for him anymore at that point um, because he's too smart. So I love that we get your box every month because I know that it's going to be something different and I know that it he'll, you know, have a whole month before I have to be like, okay, what am I going to do now? Because he figures some things out too quickly. And we can get into that a little bit later because he did figure out one of your toys. And now every time I get it out, it's just like, I don't know. It's my favorite. It's my favorite one personally, but he just, he just shakes it and it's just like, okay, dude, like that's, you're ruining it. So well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, how you came up with the idea for the business, anything about like your own personal pets, just kind of let the audience get to know you a little bit. Yeah. So my name is Megan Lennig. I started the Mind Game of the Month um, in, you know, the first box we shipped out was December 2022. And we really came up with the idea in like really solidified the idea of Mind Game of the Month in about March 2020. So really what happened is about seven years ago, we adopted our dog Skip, and he is the inspiration for this whole company, really. he um, We got him from the shelter. He was skittish. He was afraid. He was a stray. Um, and it took us, you know, he it took us a long time to kind of build his confidence build a family unit, and really for him to start to trust us. And with all that came a lot of love and affection. We poured everything into Skip. Um, Probably, gosh, three or four years later after we adopted him, I got pregnant and we had a a newborn coming our way. Um, Once our daughter was born, I had to find more creative ways to occupy Skip. And that's kind of where Mind Game of the Month was born. So I was looking for ways, because Skip was so skittish, I was looking for ways to introduce him to new things that, one, weren't scary and didn't force him out of his comfortable environment. And I noticed the need for, you know, during that time also there was COVID and people were at home working from home. And we were busy living our lives with our families, with our kids, um, and working, trying to balance it all. So I I found that there was a need to do things at home that could keep him busy and mentally stimulated. Um, 
so here comes Mind Game of the Month. I stumbled upon puzzles. And at the time, you know, as I've grown the company, I've had a better understanding of what enrichment means. Um, and I discovered that the puzzles are enrichment puzzles. They're there to mentally stimulate your dogs. And that became an important concept for Mind Game of the Month. The Mind Game is the enrichment puzzle. So I tried to use like a fun little play on words mind game of the month but it's really an enrichment puzzle and every month we focus on three things and they're focused around a dog's senses so we focus on their nose sniffing we focus on exhausting them physically so that's our play concept and then we also focus on chewing so we've learned with each of those three sniff play chew we've kind of done our research as far as what does a dog need daily to really help optimize fatigue tire them out mentally stimulate them and that's kind of how we curated each of the products in our box so we know that for snip for snipping dogs need 10 to 15 minutes of sniff time or nose work um, in order to really feel exhausted as a one hour walk is what we've learned We've also learned that every dog, every day needs 30 minutes to one hour play to really get their energy out, expend all of their energy, um, have fun, be a dog. So that's what we recommend as well. Um, and then finally, with our chew concept, we know that 10 to 15 minutes of daily chew is important for dogs. So in our box every month, we try and include a toy that focus around nose work or sniffing around playing and around chewing and we call we usually include a long lasting chew something like a, la a yak chew or a bully stick something like that that kind of can preoccupy your dog a bit longer and that i absolutely have to say that i have been really impressed with the variety we haven't gotten the same treat twice we haven't gotten the same toy twice we haven't gotten the same chew twice and it's definitely given me the opportunity to kind of figure out what Fitz likes and what Fitz doesn't like. I know that I'm going to say this wrong. So help me. The laic milk? Laic milk? The lactose? I might say it wrong too. Yeah, I, I know which one you're talking about. Laica, maybe Laica? Yeah, it's, I, it's just lactose-free cheese-flavored chew. And yeah. he freaking loved that. Thing. I like have even been looking online to try to figure out where to get them and I can't really seem to find them except for you know from the actual company and they want you to buy like a lot of them at a time yeah. and I don't need to buy like 45 of them yeah ones. yeah we so. really so we really consider ourselves a box with a purpose I mean that's really our tagline you go to bark box you go to some of the other boxes out there and you might have some fun curated themes and toys for the dogs and and things to chew on treats but really we have a purpose with our box we are there to preoccupy your dog mentally stimulate your dog every toy everything is handpicked with a purpose um and so what we what we also do that I think is different than other boxes is we're really looking for high quality toys and we're looking for really innovative products. So exactly to your point, it's something you're you wouldn't find somewhere else. It's something different and unique. Um and, and that's really the focus of our company. It's just bringing something a great products to our customers and giving parents, both human parents, dog parents an outlet to keep their dog busy during the day. Well, and I mean, I think, like I said, Fitz is a dog that figures things out. So me being able to have a variety of things over the course of the week, that's why I'm like, okay, yeah, we once a month, okay, we can do this once a month. That's totally fine because it keeps me from having to go out and trying to find something that she will like, but it also, you know, gives me multiple things so that I can prepare things in advance. So what I was saying earlier about my favorite one is the snuffle ball because watching him learn how to do that was so much fun because, you know, you roll up those little pieces of fabric and you tuck them in that hexagon thing and he rolled it around for a while and he like batted at it for a while and then he figured out that 
when he would pull those things out and unroll them that there were trees in them. Now, as I shake my head and roll my eyes, chicken in this, <laughs> he does. He just grabs it. He just shakes it and like violently. All of the food and treats and everything are just like, they're hitting my walls. They're hitting my ceiling. <laughs> it's like, dude, like, that, how is that fun for you? That only lasted like two minutes when it used to last you like almost an hour. He's so, smart. He's smart. Yeah. And to that point, well, we really, we try and switch up the toys that we play with. So when it comes to the enrichment puzzle or the mind game, we try and include soft goods. We try and include snuffle like uh, snuffle mats. We try and include um, slow feeders or interactive to- uh, puzzles. We're really trying to switch it up each month so that one, you can understand your dog's style, what they like. Like for example, my dog Skip, because he is so skittish, he does like those soft good toys, exactly like the bully you were describing. Um, that's perfect for him, and so it gives you an opportunity to test out different toys, and then yeah. I think the one that we got last month has been the one that was the most challenging for him. And I don't know if it's because it's challenging or if it's because he does not like his feet being messed with. We can't trim the nails. I got one of those boards, you know, so he could scratch his own nails off. But as soon as he figured out that it was scratching his nails off, he refused to do it anymore, even though, you know, he could potentially get trees. So the last one we got was the puzzle that you move the pieces around the little circle and then he would get the treats if he he sniffed them out. But when I think he realized that he had to use his feet and his nose, he was like, I'm out. I'm done with this one. I can't anymore. He didn't like that as much, which to me, it's just like, okay, I don't understand. You know, you always want a challenge. You know, you want to have a little bit more. But the second it involves his feet, he's like, no, thank you, ma'am. I do not (laughs) want that. (laughs) <laughs> and do not want that. I will say the other really fun one that we have liked a lot is the the little Yeti guy with the yes. the whatever those you put him in the microwave and it blows up the thing in his stomach and then he just chews it and rolls it around. I think that he likes that one because he thinks it's like having a ball in the house because he's not mm-hmm. allowed to have a ball in the house because he gets just insane. You know, you're shaking that toy thing, give him a ball and it's just everything is broken. So he yep. he likes the little Yeti guy and he will lay down. I think that's been the really coolest experience for me as far as learning about enrichment and how it works and how much it changes and fulfills your dog's needs for those certain areas in their life is watching him get invested in the toy or the lick mat or the chew and him lay down. Because this is a dog that is bing, bong, boom, bam, all over the house all the time. He's got so Mm -hmm. much energy that enrichment really became a huge tool for me once I learned more about it because he, you know, he'll lay down. You know, you you fill up a a slow feeder or lick mat kind of thing with a bunch of different stuff and freeze it. And he's busy for an hour given one of the chews that you guys sent and he's good for 15, 20 minutes, sometimes a little bit longer, depending on what it is. And it gives them like those different levels of stimulation. And then by the end of the night, after we've played fetch 18 times and gone on, you know, two half mile walks and done our enrichment with toys, he actually like lays down at the end of the night and he lays down at the end of the bed. And it's one of my favorite things about him is that I know that he's had a good day and that he's mentally emotionally and you know just physically fulfilled because he goes oh yeah the status is out yeah love it it and that's so great Emily because that is the point of this box I mean it's really there to be um, a tool for pet owners to use and utilize you feel good at the end of the day you've kept your dog busy they're they feel good they're tired I mean that makes me feel good that you know that I will I absolutely love it. So you you offer the monthly subscriptions, which is like a mystery. So I like it. I love the mystery box. For me, that's like amazing because I don't know what I'm going to get. I don't know if he, you know, how he's going to engage with it. And I know that it's either going to be an entire week that he's trying to figure it out or it's going to be a couple of hours. It just really depends. Um, a lot of the toys are still in one piece because 
again, we don't usually do a whole lot of toys in the house. And so I've been kind of saving them all to take out in the yard this summer because he he just gets wild and things go flying. And I have plants and breakable things. And so I just don't want him to get crazy in the house. Uh, but I have the octopus that we got last month or the month before in the drawer. And he's very interested in it. He definitely mm-hmm. wants to play with the octopus. So I can't wait till it warms up just a teeny bit more and we can take some of these toys outside and really see how they go. I'm excited to also try because we haven't tried the the disc thing either. The the one that you throw that's like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like a, like it a, a pop one leaf clover. Yeah, that like expands and shrinks down into like yep. a ball or something. Yeah, I'm yep. interested to see how he likes that too. So I'm really looking forward to the summer because some of these toys that I've been saving up, I'm just going to like scatter them around the yard and we'll see what happens to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. And what, you know, we've been trying to incorporate themes as we've been growing. You know, it's really subtle themes that you talked about the octopus. We had in that box, we had um, like fish skins as the long lasting treat. And then we had clams as like yeah. the treat that goes with the enrichment puzzle. So we're really looking for real fun out of the box products that you just wouldn't get somewhere else. So, um, and I also want to mention with that for our treat specifically, we focus on clean ingredients. That's really important for us. Um, it's not always easy and we really try and find things where you can at least read the labels, you know, something that you want to trust what you're giving to your dogs. I think Sometimes as dog owners, we don't read the labels. We just, this is a great little treat, feed it to your dog. But, you know, what's important for us is that we're feeding our dog things healthy. Um, And so that's what we're bringing to our box. We're also bringing cleaning uh, treats with clean clean ingredients, both the long-lasting chew and the individual treats itself. And I love that because I have looked at the ingredients, um, you know, health, health and all that kind of stuff has always been obviously really important to me because I was a vet tech. But learning as much as I have learned about nutrition, specifically from this podcast and talking to some of our guests and about how important reading labels is, has been game changer for us. Um, you know, Fitz, I thought, was a picky eater, but I think it just turns out it wasn't necessarily that he was picky. It's a texture thing. And it was like it either didn't make him feel good or he just didn't. He really just didn't like it. I fed, you know, one of the big store brands for years and years and years because in the veterinary world, they came in and they educated us and they told us all these things about their products that, you know, you think are wonderful and amazing. And you're like, okay, this is the way to go. But then you come out here into the real world and you start talking to all these people who specialize in canine nutrition and you start talking about you know the fillers and the additives and the colors and you know the coloring the dyes all the things and you start comparing and you learn things like you know the first five ingredients should include some type of bone some type of organ some type of protein and you want to like be careful about what the fillers are not too much starch not too much sugar all of these things so I have really looked at your treats that you have provided in the box and the clam chowder ones were actually a really big hit and, and the the lactose bone thing the lay bone or whatever it is that thing was definitely a favorite and then i think we also got maybe it was a trachea or something um but we, he liked that too and everything was you know all natural ingredients safe ingredients didn't have a lot of fillers and he has really liked everything so far and we haven't had any issues with anything which is really incredible to feel safe getting something in the mail not knowing not knowing what it is literally not knowing what it is and then being able to look at it and go oh okay this is I feel comfortable with this you know that the quality of the toys that you provide are really good and like you said they are really unique um the snuffle ball I had not seen anything like that until we got it And then I had so many people saying, where did you get that? Where did you get that? To the point that I was finally like, okay, one, you either need to contact my game of the month and see if you can purchase one from them. Or two, you could probably find one of those hexagons like empty 
And I can take a picture and show you. It's literally just like fleece strips. You could go yeah. on Joann's and cut them yourself and <laughs> tie them together with a twist tie. Because I, for a few days after, you know, when he was really into it, I was like, man, I need to get another one of these things. How am I going to get another one of these things? And then I really, really investigated it. And I was like, okay, well, if I needed to, I could make one of these. But yeah, I just, I just love the the variety and the mission and like I said I love that it's a, a surprise because it's as much of a surprise for me as it is for him and then watching him trying to figure all of it out is just it's fun and it's rewarding for him at the same time so it's really cool what you guys are doing and I know that you posted something on uh, Instagram the other day about having um pick your own boxes. So why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about how that works? Yeah, so we, so I guess our main attraction is a subscription box that comes complete with, you know, a sniff toy, a play toy, a chew, um, and then a, a treat that goes with the enrichment puzzle. And that's kind of the fun, exactly what you're saying. That's the fun of it all, just you don't know what you're going to get. We change out the toys, we change out the variety um, and have some themes incorporated so that's a fun experience but if you're new to enrichment puzzles if you're new to this concept um we just launched what we call personalized pink and that's essentially you can go on our website and you can just order individual items that you want to test out for your dog um we have the popping ball that you were talking about that's a play toy we have some of our um chews whether it be treats or whether it be one of some of our long lasting chews on there and then we have a huge assortment of enrichment puzzles and so we're updating that um every month with new products and it's just really your opportunity to kind of test out the water see what your dog might like and what they might not like and then just get a feel for what we can offer your dog in the future is there much of a price difference between the monthly subscription and the pick your own box or is the pick your own box like would you get more than one toy or more than one shoe in the pick your own box how does that work not the price fix it's really just an individual picking it's almost like you're just going onto a store you know and going into a store and individually picking items so it's not a like a curated experience i guess it's really just individual items and this, so those are going to be you know pretty affordable because you're just choosing the individual items that you want the subscription box is right now that 55 dollars um that usually includes shipping depending on where you are so um there is definitely there is a price difference just because you are it's the individual products versus a curated experience that you're picking out. I really do think that the curated experience is such a cute idea. Like you said, you know, the octopus and then the enrichment puzzle had like a little sea theme. I think it was like anchor boat anchors and waves or something like that on the puzzle, mm -hmm. and then the clam chowder treats and i don't remember what the chew was for that but it was really fun because i did go oh hey this is kind of all like sea like ocean stuff this is cute and um i thought that was really kind of unique because i feel like you know you can go on amazon and you can find whatever but my experience with amazon has been so mixed that i don't trust the quality of what i'm going to get from amazon um, you know, you pay fifteen, twenty dollars for these snuffle mats and they're like felt and they just dissolve under saliva and, you know, dog nose slobber and, and all of that stuff. And when they're made out of materials like that, that's not sustainable because one, you can't clean it. And two, if you try to, because it says machine washable on it, let me tell you what. That thing was not machine washable. It fell apart in the washing machine. So that's, you know, I don't want to, I would much rather spend the $55 a month and know that I'm going to get something that is going to last, that is going to be of good quality. And that was handpicked by a small business that is really on a mission to create something special and fun for the dog parent and dog to enjoy together. Like I said, that's, I think, my favorite part about it is, you know, he knows when that box comes, 
he he sits there and we'll pull everything out one thing at a time and then you know i kind of will give him the choice i'll lay like all three things down on the floor and i'll say okay you know what what are we gonna do and and he'll just kind of you know usually drag something off in a direction and that's that's kind of my <laughs> indicator okay i think the the biggest struggle for me is that I have learned with the snuffle ball is that he has got to be outside if I am preparing that because he'll just sit there and stare at me and cry oh. in a time because he knows that it's for him, which is great. I'm glad that he knows that it's for him, but it takes a minute to roll out the ball of the yeah, house. That's true. Yeah. Little, little things. Cause I would say there's probably at least 20 or 30 of them individually that you have to roll up. So it can take a minute, even if you're not putting treats in every single one of them, to roll it up. And so for him to sit there and just be like begging with his eyes and being like, oh, mom, hurry up. I really I love hearing how your dog's interacted with the box. I'm like, because it's just been so important. I think also from my perspective, what I love about the box is that I can prepare the products just like you've done with the snuffle ball and then allow him to busy himself while I busy myself. It may be prepping dinner for my daughter. It may be changing your diaper, Who, whatever it is. I, I feel good as a mom, both as a dog mom and a human mom, knowing that I'm taking care of my family. And I think that's, you know, it's just been really the purpose of this box is so important to me. And I believe in it so much. I believe in the benefits that it brings. I love that we've incorporated the clean ingredients. It's important to me um, that we're feeding our dogs healthy things that their gut can digest. Um, and it's just an exciting product. Um, I, and I feel like for the regular dog owners, now I know there's a lot of people like trainers, um, people who really have an expertise in these type of products. But for the regular dog owner, I, I hope that we're bringing something unique and different to them. Um, things they haven't seen before. I mean, we do like this, this month we included, uh, it's a version of a lick mat really, but that's really fun for someone. Before I started this business, I didn't know much about that. I never thought of the concept that I can take some beef broth, pour it into a lick mat, put some of his, some of his favorite treats in there, freeze that. And that becomes an incredible long lasting treat for your dog. And again, they're busy, they're preoccupied, they're tired by the end of the day. I mean, it's really such an exciting product. And I I hope that more people find the benefits of it and get excited about what we're bringing in our experience. Lick mats have become such a huge part of our daily routine. And they were life-saving this last winter. Because like I said, Fitz is a high-energy dog. And he is go, 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 go all the time. And when I learned about enrichment and lick mat and that, you know, 15 minutes of sniffing is equal to an hour of physical exertion, that was game changing for me because then on top of that, I learned, you know, overstimulating your dog in one area can be not beneficial to you because if you overstimulate your dog, physically, but you don't engage the mental emotional part of it. Now you have an unbalanced dog who can't wind down at night and doesn't self sue properly and then right. sleep through the night. But if you can do a walk and you can play and you can chew and then you throw that lick mat in there at the end of the day, all of a sudden you now have a dog that has engaged all of its natural instinctual senses and it's mentally, emotionally, and physically fulfilled because it's not overstimulated in one department and not had anything in the other department. So, you know, I have bought all kinds of different lick mats. Um, I think my favorite ones that I have most recently got are from Brew and Aussie, who will be on this year later. And they're like these heart shaped ones that she got for Valentine's Day, but they have these honeycomb shapes and they're really deep. So I can put different things in each one and I can sprinkle food in there and then I can freeze it and I can give it to him and it'll last him an hour, an hour and a half. And it's great. Yep. That has now saved me from going outside to play fetch eight times. And now we've only had to go outside and play fetch 10 times instead of 18. 
and exactly. we can still go on our walks. But he's sleeping at the end of the night, and he's not being crazy and bouncing all over he's the. Not barking and... at you, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And he's and satisfied. Yeah, it's crazy when your dog goes from that uh, 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 constantly bothering you to like do something, do something, do something. You know, at, at to yeah. oh, okay, I can actually relax. We can hang out, and we got to do fun things today. It just, it does. It makes you feel like a better parent to them because you've given them these options. I think that that's something that's really important to reinforce is that, you know, your dog's world is only as big as you allow it to be. Mm -hmm. It's only as big as the number of places you can take them. It's only as big as your backyard or the car or, you know, the vacation or whatever it is that you do with your dog. But- that all comes with time and enrichment and poise and choose are very good tools that you can use to help your dog through those kinds of situations. Car rides. I mean, stick the lick mat on the window with some frozen peanut butter. Oh, that's a great idea. Right to the yeah. vet, right? Yeah. yeah. Or let's have a bone in the, you know, not, not a bone, but a chew in the back seat or Thing so that they can be entertained on the car ride too because a lot of that anxiety comes from them being overstimulated in the situation and enrichment toys and like mats and things like that gives them a different way to outlet that energy that's more positive and beneficial for everyone else in the car too because we don't have the dog bit bopping around all over the back seat and the you know, back end of the SUV and then trying to get up in the front seat. And I know, you know, car safety is a whole nother topic. You probably should have a seatbelt or a kennel for your dog, but you do, you drive around and you see dogs bing, bang, boom, all around the car. And that's, you know, there, there are so many things that you could do that would be more beneficial for you and your dog's well-being and safety by just providing them with some of these toys to play with in the back while you're you know, out running errands or going to the vet or whatever it is that you have to do. So there are so many things that you can do for your dog that I think most people just don't even realize that are out there. I think that's it. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. what I, and even as a dog owner myself, I, I don't have a trainer's background, but as I dove into this, it's just incredible. Like when I think of how I will train my dog and just, I'm sure trainers know this, but you really want to use some of these enrichment toys before trying to train your dog. If you have a reactive dog, you're going on a walk, hire them out with these products. Um, play fetch with some of our cool toys or give them the enrichment puzzle, give them the long lasting chew, and then try and train them. I mean, this the products in our box have so many great benefits that can help in all aspects of a dog parent's life. Yeah. I know, you know, Fitz, who I have talked about so much on Instagram, who is like Mr. Reactivity. And I have learned that we go outside and we play fetch and we go to the bathroom and then we come inside and we do a lick mat and then we do a little bit of training and then we can go on a walk. And guess who's way less reactive when he's done other things and feels more confident about where he is mentally and emotionally when we go on a walk. It's a huge, huge benefit to owners. And anybody who is not doing enrichment should definitely look into it. I mean, Megan is a perfect person to reach out to and talk to about, you know, the variety of things that they have. If there's a product on her website that you're curious about, try it out, you know, or message me or message her. I'm sure one of us has probably tried it and used it with one of our dogs and had, you know, success or not success. But again, this is another point where we go, every dog is different and every owner is too. So make sure that you're really paying attention to your dog the first couple of times that they're playing with these new toys, because if they're not engaging with it, or if they're just being, you know, kind of crazy and flinging the snuffle ball so that they can get all the treats out of it, you know, you're not really getting the benefits out of it. So you want to make sure you have the right toy. Right. And another thing, so we, you know, we consider ourselves a box with a purpose, but we also have kind of a motto with our company and it's enrichment every day. And that's what we're really trying to incorporate 
Because to your point, I mean, we're delivering all these great different products for you to try out with your dog. And we want you to consume them. We want you to use them. And we understand the importance. Again, when you think of the week, you're preparing for the week, going to work, what it may be. A lot of people these days, we're doing meal prep. We're doing all sorts of prepping for the family and planning for the family. We want to encourage you to plan for the week for your dog. We want you to take our products prep them, put the treats in there, plan one per day. That way you always have something ready. I mean, it just takes less than 15 minutes. Put put our toys together, have a plan for the week, and then everyone in your family is satisfied and fulfilled. Hey, that's an excellent suggestion. And I actually, that Monday is my Sunday. And so on Mondays, that's the day that I you know take all of the lick mats out and I make, you know, three or four for Toby and I make three or four for Fitz and I stack them in the freezer because you don't want to make them too far in advance, especially when you're freezing, because if you get that freezer burn, that can be damaging to their tongues, which is damaging to their senses and all the kinds of things. So you don't want to, you don't want to cause those kind of issues and you don't want it to, you know, change the food or the consistency of the food, all those things, because it's got the freezer burn. So you know, be mindful how far in advance you prepare things. But definitely, you know, if you can find a spot where you can say, okay, every four days, I know I need to make sure that these things are clean and now they're prepped and ready because it is so much easier when you have things going on and you can just be like, oh, boom, here, you can do this while I do this, which like tonight I should have thought ahead and had them ready for recording the podcast episode. But they had them earlier in the day because I wasn't thinking about it. So, you know, it's just, it's also, I think one of those things, I don't think you can necessarily overdo it either. As long as you're watching, you know, the level of food that they're intaking and you're balancing out with their diet so that they don't, you know, gain too much weight or anything like that. You want to be, make healthy choices for them in that way too. But as long as you're doing that, and you're factoring those things into your day, it's okay to have more than one lick mat a day. It's okay to, you know, play fetch more than once a day. It's okay to have, exactly. you know, yeah. yeah, exactly. The sniffing and all that kind of stuff. Maybe not like three or four tracheas a day. Maybe let's not. <laughs> no, that. definitely not. Yeah. It's about, it's about switching it up. You know, it's really, and again, that goes back to our focus on sensory. So it's a sniff play true. One day is sniff, the next day is play, the next day is chew and switch it up for your dog, but incorporate that enrichment every day because it's it's important. And enrichment is also a law, you know? So sometimes we do that naturally. It's just, uh, you know, a mo- our, our new motto and what we're really trying to encourage our subscribers to do with their dogs, to use our products and just be mindful of the time they're spending with their pup. I have... Actually, those clam chowder treats are a really good example of that because when he, you know, wasn't so interested in that that puzzle, I just said, you know what, we still have these treats. What can I do? I can use them in the snuffle ball. I can throw them in the treat pack, yeah. the, walk, the walk. So when we're outside and we're foraging, doing our uh, enrichment, like out in the yard where we're scatter feeding and hanging out doing that kind of stuff that gives them a different variety and a different texture in in that too so you know if you have a few extra leftover treats from your puzzles that month you just throw them in with the rest and and repurpose them because your dog's gonna love it no matter what and like like you said the the quality of your treats are really good and they stay fresh and they're always uh, those fish ones were like you could smell them you know so (laughs) Oh, I opened the the long chews and I was like, "Woo, these are stinky!" And both the dog, I was like, "Yes, <laughs> give me yeah. a stinky thing." Well, we are just about out of time, but is there anything else that you would like to leave the listeners with tonight? I think the only other thing, you know, definitely try out our products. Try something new for your dog, whether it be just our personalized picks and just testing something new or a curated experience, but. What's also important to us is one dollar of every item sold goes back to a shelter. And that's important for us as we grow. Um, we have really big goals on how we can support shelters in the future. Um, and we want to hit them. We we really want to be able to give back as much as we can every month 
to a local animal shelter in need. So yeah, join our pack and test out our products. See if you like it. And I am obviously a big proponent for trying new things. Like there's never the wrong time to try something new. Like I said, I didn't know anything about enrichment up until about, you know, a year and a half ago. And it has changed our lives. Training has changed our lives. We've Food diet has changed our lives. You know, we've done so much work that my biggest thing that I can tell people is exactly what you just said. Try new things because you're going to give your pet that much bigger of a window in your world and you're going to give them that much more time and energy to invest and wear themselves out. But you're also giving them that mental, emotional stimulation that they so badly need that I think up until recently wasn't really acknowledged, which is, I think, really cool that right. we're changing the way that we look at our dogs and how they interact with our world and what we can do to kind of give back to that natural, instinctual life that, you know, it just exists in them that we don't normally say, hey, go be yourself for a little while. So I think that your box really gives dogs an opportunity to just be dogs and enjoy playing and chewing and sniffing and all of the things that are just innately part of them. So I I just absolutely love getting your box every month and we can't wait to see what's coming next month and the next month. And we just really, really, really love working with you a lot. And while you guys are listening, we do have a code. You can use the straight up dog talk code. It's S-U-D-T at checkout and you get 20% off your first box. So there's literally nothing to even think about. You just take the 20% off. If it's not for you, then you can cancel it. It's not difficult to cancel. It's not hard to figure it out. And it's not like, you know, you got to go through three different pages to find the button that says click cancel. And then you don't have to click cancel like 18 times. You just cancel your subscription. It's really easy. So definitely go give them a a, a check out and give them a follow and get your dog a box. And if you're not going to do the monthly subscription, do a custom pick and, you know, learn something about your dog because that's, that's the most important thing is that we're always learning. So thank you so much for being here tonight, Megan. It was a true pleasure and I cannot wait to continue having collaborations and conversations with you going forward. Thank you, Emily. Thank you so much. And I look forward to more of your feedback. Thank you. All right, guys, that's it for tonight. We will see you next week on Straight Up Dog Talk. See if it fits us. Good night. All right, bye, guys. This episode features a paid partnership with Mind Game of the Month. Mind Game of the Month is a subscription box for dogs meant to exhaust their energy and enrich their mind. The box is intended for busy parents who can't entertain their pups all day and need an easy way to expend their energy. Every month, your pup will sniff, play, and chew their way through the products in the box. Every box includes one enrichment puzzle, one active play toy, one long-lasting treat, and one full bag of treat. Each product serves as a mental workout to tire your pup. Check out their website in the episode details below. Straight Up Dog Talk was created by Emily Breslin. It is edited, produced, and co-hosted by Josh Wasta, under the supervision of Straight Up Dog Talk, LLC, and Emily Breslin. If you're enjoying this podcast, follow or subscribe to be sure you don't miss an episode and leave us a review on your favorite platform. Looking for more honest and relatable dog content? Check out our sister show, Unpacked, with Jerry Sheriff and Madison Simpson. Thanks for listening to Straight Up Dog Talk. See you next week.